Sometimes we want to study things that are really, really, really far away. But data on distant objects can be difficult to get. And it just so happens that some of the most important and interesting objects in space are also the most elusive. Exoplanets. Exoplanets are planets outside of our solar system that orbit other stars. Maybe you're thinking, yeah, they're far away, but can't we just point a telescope at them? Stars are far away and we can see those. Which turns out to be the problem. Because when you try to look at an exoplanet, you see this. No matter where the planet is in its orbit, the glare from the star completely obscures it. So how do scientists study or even discover an exoplanet when they can't even look at it? I can't see wind, but I know it's there. Because I can see that flag, and those wind chimes, and that unfortunate bird. I can study wind by its effects on its surroundings, just like we can discover and study an exoplanet by its effects on the star. Spectroscopy is the analysis of light from a star broken up by a prism or grating into different wavelengths. Gases that the star is composed of leave patterns of black lines where they absorb different wavelengths from the star's spectrum. Aside from telling us what the star is made of, this also tells us how the star is moving. Sometimes, patterns of gases on the star's spectra are shifted towards blue or red. This is called the Doppler effect. When a star is moving towards or away from us, the colors shift as their wavelengths appear to stretch or shrink. So if the star's spectrum is alternating red or blue, it's because it has a planet big enough to shift the center of mass of the system and wobble the star. The other primary method used to study exoplanets is called transit photometry. When I hold this ball in front of this lamp, you can't see a perfect silhouette. The light still darkens proportionally. The same thing applies to planets. When an exoplanet passes between its star and the Earth, called a transit, we get a measurable drop in the star's brightness and how long it takes the planet to pass in front of its star. Now that we have our data, we can start to visualize the planet, something of a puzzle. We have to use information from the star to find the planet's characteristics like mass and radius. Fortunately for us, some very smart people have done most of the work already. The recipes are already written, but we just have to add our ingredients. Take Kepler's third law. In our orbital period, how long it takes the planet to orbit, found in transit, the mass of the star, and Newton's gravitational constant. Put your ingredients through the equation, and out comes a freshly baked orbital radius. The other recipes are just as simple. Add our ingredients, and they're converted into more information about the planet. When it's done, we have a much better idea of our planet's characteristics. We can even begin to guess at composition from its density and mass. Not all exoplanets reveal their characteristics so readily. Scientists are always looking for new ways to study or observe them, or to apply the data that we have. But for planets we do find, every glimpse tells us more about the universe in our own way. The more we learn, the faster we learn. And maybe someday, when humanity takes its first steps towards exoplanetary vacation, we'll be a little more prepared.